May the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph be blessed down for every name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Because this is in Christ, this morning we celebrated the Mass, the Feast of St. Joseph the Worker, who commemorated the second Sunday Easter, the Good Pastor. This afternoon we do the reverse. We spoke this morning about St. Joseph being the Good Pastor, but Jesus Christ, our Savior, is the Good Pastor. How amazing are the words of our Savior and Master Jesus Christ. From its beginning, the Catholic Church has based the hierarchy's role on Christ's model of the Good Shepherd. With these magnificent three commands to St. Peter in the 21st chapter of St. John, Tend my lambs, shepherd my sheep, and tend my sheep. In reversal of the three denials of Peter to Christ. What shepherd would sacrifice then his own life for his livestock? This is precisely what makes the shepherd good. The Greek, more literal translation, reads noble shepherd. This expression then perhaps captures the heroic and praiseworthy dimensions of the actions of Christ. Jesus, our Saviour, thus makes a free and voluntary gift of his life on the cross, through which his sheep come to receive life in the full, life in abundance. His self-gift on the cross, perfect act of love. The perfect example of his teaching that laying down one's life for another is the greatest expression of this love, this agape, sacrificial love. The self-sacrificial love is thus the defining standard for all of the disciples, thus of Christ. St. Peter teaches the Christians this patience in misery and afflictions, even in unjust persecution. And for this purpose places before them an example of Christ, who though most innocent, suffered most terribly and most Patient. Are we true sheep of the Good Shepherd? If in our daily toils, the smallest cross, perhaps to every word, we become angry and impatient. Christ has proved himself a Good Shepherd by sacrificing his life even for his enemies, for those who did not love him and could not reward him. He has besides given himself to us for our food, a heavenly divine banquet in the Blessed Sacrament. If we want to be held in the fold as sheep of Christ, we must listen to the voice of the shepherd in the sermons and instructions, in the spiritual books and conversations. We must be obedient and especially give ear and follow the rules of the church through which the Good Shepherd speaks to us. For he, says Saint Augustine, who has not the church for his mother, will not have God for his father. If we gladly receive the food of the Good Shepherd, his body, blood, soul and divinity in Holy Communion, if we are patient and meek as a lamb, freely forgiving our enemies, if we love all men from our heart, do good to them and seek to bring them Jesus Christ, then we are listening to the voice of the true shepherd, our Saviour. How grateful we should be good, good, how grateful we should be to the Lord that He has brought you, each one, to the fold of the Catholic Church. And how diligently we should conduct ourselves as good sheep. Do not be a sheep in the world and following the maxims of the world, the prince of darkness. You only want to be a sheep, according to Matthew 25, when we separate the goats from the sheep at the end of time. There will be but one fold and one shepherd, when in the end, by the prayers of the church and by her missionaries, all nations 
shall be converted to the only same Catholic Church, constituting then one church under one head. We wait with expectant hope then for the Good Shepherd. By his dark, violent death, Christ obtained for us the remission of our sins, the grace to lead a life pleasing to the Lord in this world, eternal happiness in the next, for which we hope firmly, with secure confidence, may we now expect and most assuredly will obtain if we do not fail in our part and return to the life of sin. We must therefore use our free will and collaborate with the Lord, stop sinning and remain in a state of sanctifying grace. We can ask ourselves a question now, what are the qualities that describe then a good shepherd? Only Jesus is called good. You must pray for the shepherds to imitate Christ then today in the church, which we know is suffering the passion. Kalos, the Greek word translated good, describes that which is noble, wholesome, good and beautiful. This is the character of the Lord. He alone is good. Behold, we know in the scripture, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I have to do, must I do to have eternal life? The Lord said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. Jesus Christ kept and fulfilled the commandments perfectly because he is the author of the commandments. He is God. Those who call on the name of Jesus are forgiven and are seen by God as good. But it is only through Christ that we can lay claim to this goodness through the cross. As we know, we are still works in progress in this battle amidst this valley of tears. There are shepherds who lead well and shepherds who do not. There are still mercenaries in the world who will run away when the wolf comes. They do not really care about the sheep at all. Unfortunately, there are wolves who seek to devour the sheep. There are those who sow hatred, malice, doubt and confusion. Look at the confusion that surrounds us now. Has there ever been so much confusion with doctrine in the Catholic Church? Christ, our Lord, the Good Shepherd, the Good Shepherd, defend us from these things. With the light of his divine word and the grace he gives us the sacraments, Christ forms our minds and strengthens our will. He protects us. The good and holy shepherd then will save his flock. We need, don't we, holy shepherds who will point us to Jesus Christ, who will imitate the good shepherd and who will submit to the authority of Christ. Jesus has the exclusive title then of the good shepherd. He is the only way to the Father. He is the way, the truth, and the life. The church now desperately needs holy priests while suffering her bitter passion now on the cross. Remember well that the pastors is very easy to criticize nowadays, but the pastors and the priests need your prayer support. They are men and thus capable of sinning. We must bed our lady, the mother of all priests, for them, the pastors, to be imbued with the following virtues and qualities. First of all, they must have a burning love for Jesus crucified, to be conformed to him, because it is only when they are inflamed with the love of Christ that they can inflame others. You, can, you cannot give what you have not got. They have to be inflamed with the love of Christ. They must have the desire to be martyrs for Catholic faith, even to the point of shedding blood for the Lord of glory. Such must be their holiness of life, 
that they should be marrying. They should have the beautiful love of the lady in this month of May and each and every day. They should pray the Holy Rosary and consecrate their priesthood to the Mother of the Saviour, asking her to be with them always, and especially at the Holy Mass, in the celebration of the Holy Mass, starting even from vesting in the sacristy to the last moment of the Mass, and be with the priests, especially in the sacrament of confession, to help them. Do you realize what height of holiness is required for the priesthood? They must be purer than angels, purer than angels. So it says in the magnificent dignities and duties of the priest, written by the great doctor of the church, St. Alphonsus de Ligori. The sanctity of the priest is so high in this treatise that for many it would frighten them into remaining in a, to a lay state. But this height of sanctity requested should spur us on to give our lives to save souls. The priest thus must have this desire not just to save his own soul, but to be generous to save all them souls entrusted to him. Remember Holy Seraphic St. Francis remained a deacon. On his way one time to ordination to the priesthood called by a bishop, he met an angel with a crystal presented to him. This is the quality required of the priest to shine like a crystal, the angel said, and then asked him where he was going. He said to be ordained by the bishop. Is your soul as clean as this crystal? The angel asked. Thus St. Francis saw the immensity of the obligation and remained a deacon. Where are we all then? If we look at St. Francis, the one who, it says in private revelation, occupies, will occupy the seat of Lucifer, the most closest to the sacred heart of Jesus, and yet he humbled himself as to not even to be ordained a minister of Christ. What say us sinners when Francis, the greatest imitation of Jesus Christ, humbled himself and refused this gift of ordination? The priest then must also be humble and realize that all gifts are from no merit gained by himself. The Lord has called him from all eternity to the priesthood. We must respond every day by asking Jesus and Mary for the grace to have a holy vocation to the priesthood, the very priesthood. He also must be prudent to act with wisdom in concrete situations, armed with knowledge after studying. He must though not hide with fear behind prudence as many do today when the prelates are all quiet in the face of this horrific onslaught against the Catholic faith from both inside and outside the church. Thus he must be a man of God and of courage like Saint John the Baptist, Saint Athanasius celebrate tomorrow St. John Fisher, the only bishop in England, one out of about 35, who stood for the truth. To be like this great John Fisher, to shout the truth from the rooftops in defense of Jesus Christ. The truth then must be called out as a work of charity, as a means to prompt conversion of hearts. The only thing that matters is the salvation of souls. The good pastor must have an ardent love for the Holy Scripture, that he makes these words his own. If you make my word your home, you will indeed be my disciples. You will come to know the truth, and the truth will set you free. John chapter 8. He must be a teacher, a doctor, a father, and a judge four hats together in the confessional and be always obedient to the church when the pillars of truth and authority are observed. 
not this blind obedience. Obedience has two pillars, truth and authority. In short then, you must pray to your brothers and sisters in Christ for the pastor to be a man of the Lord, to be a man of Mary, a man of constant prayer, a man of sacrifice, ready to be martyred for Jesus Christ and the Blessed Virgin Mary. We ask especially for all priests today on this first day of the month of the Mother to consecrate their vocations gifted by Christ, the Blessed Mother. Remember well, there can be no holy priesthood without Mary, who cooperated as co redemptor to the foot of the cross to win the very graces for the sacrament of ordination and the sanctity of priests. We echo the words of the great Saint Pope John Paul II. I will give you shepherds in 1992, this document he wrote. Every aspect of priestly formation can be referred to Mary, the human being who has responded better than any other to God's call. Mary became both the servant and the disciple of the Word to the point of conceiving in her heart and in her flesh the Word made man, so as to give him to mankind. Mary was called to educate the one eternal priest, who became docile and subject to her motherly authority. With her example and intercession, the Blessed Virgin keeps vigilant watch over the growth of vocations and priestly life in the Church. Amen. May the holy names of Jesus, Mary and Joseph be blessed now and forever in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.